Hi, this is Chris Lidgate. I'm editor of Reed Magazine, and I have been reading a terrific book called The Natural History of Revolution by Reed history professor Mary Ashburn Miller, and I thought I would go and meet Mary and ask her some questions about her book. Have you been reading the book? I am well into the introductory chapter. Yeah. Um, and I'm very impressed. It's really a terrific piece of work. It was a fun project for me to work on, so it was actually really hard to let it go. So basically, my question was, how were people wrapping their minds around this revolution and somebody's gone quite wrong? Um, and how were they explaining that to the citizens who, who believed in them and trusted them? Um, and so what I really started looking at were speeches and plays and all of these kinds of things where revolutionaries were trying to explain or justify that violence. And I was really struck as I was reading that what they were talking about were actually, uh, were actually images of, of nature. So what I found was essentially the revolutionaries were looking at all of this language of, of natural science that had been emerging in the Enlightenment in which these disasters of nature were tragic, of course, but they were also um, productive, they were constructive. So they were referring to the natural world to, in some way, justify what was happening in the social world. Yeah, to justify and, and to explain. Um, and basically, uh, what ended up happening was kind of as uh, the revolution kept going, they, they seemed to really buy into this language in a certain way, so this becomes not just a, a justification, but actually starts to kind of propel political action in some senses. Do you have a favorite over here? Are you looking for complicated or not? Let's go. I feel pretty positive. Okay, wait. Yeah, let's do this. Oh, God. A cup of tea and everything. Yeah. Thank you, Megan. How are your finals going? Good job. All right. It's great. Good feeling, huh? Yeah. Well, enjoy the holidays. Yeah, you too. Look at break. It seems as if these people were using the language of natural history in some way to uh, explain or justify the violence of the reign of terror. Mm -hmm. How much of that was what they truly believed and how much of that was what they manipulated yeah. to get the people to do what they wanted? Yeah, this is something that I think is really hard um, to suss out. Uh, it seems to be that it, orig it originates as sort of this um, ad hoc response so they the, the best example for this is the September massacres, which were a series of um, prison massacres in September of 1792, um, where the, the people of Paris sort of went in and raided the prisons um, and held these immediate trials um, and said either this person is, is guilty and will be executed immediately or this person will be set free. It was this sort of terrifying moment for a lot of a lot of Paris and a lot of the letters that were writing uh, that were written in the wake of it are um, really emphasizing how traumatic and this was. And in the wake of that is when you start to get, um, for example, this, this phrase about being terrible like Elizabeth Earthquake, right? So it's in the wake of this um, that you really first start to see comparisons between the people of Paris and these natural events. Uh, so for example, they were compared to a flood that sometimes overruns its banks. Um, and uh, But uh, nevertheless, you know, sort of regenerates the, the earth around it or makes the earth more fertile, right? Um, so it's in the wake of that, which I think was this kind of knee-jerk response, trying to find a way to um, avoid condemning the people of, of Paris. Uh, but eventually, this, this sort of becomes, um, it seems to be something that they buy into to a certain extent. Uh, so that at the Festival of the Supreme Being, which was a festival that, that Robespierre sponsored in, in 1794, uh, but ends up being this uh, sort of uh, festival in praise of of nature in which they thank nature for playing a role in the revolution and so say essentially we are all nature's children right this is nature being the revolution is nature being restored to earth okay so eventually what what i think starts as this sort of uh reaction to violence ultimately in some ways becomes something that that promotes or allows for violence looking forward so i think it's something that actually transitions over the course of the revolution well, that's fascinating. It's a fascinating book. Thank you very much. I can't wait for the next time we have coffee. Well, um, when, when you get to uh, the ending, you can let me know <laughs> if you found it at all convincing. In the end. Um.